Okay, let's answer this question once and for all. How to upload the highest quality videos to Instagram? Before we begin, I just wanted to quickly update you guys on what's happening with the channel. So um, I've been very busy, as you see, I am one day late uploading this video. It's literally Thursday 1 p.m. today and I have to upload this video in four hours. So it's going to be a quick video. I'm just extremely busy with all the projects. I have to prioritize the paid work first, but I'm still keeping on. I'm still uploading every week. I'm meeting up with Sukri soon this August uh, and we'll be shooting more content like your beloved um, how to shoot shoot cinematic reels Gakuyan style. We'll be filming more these type of hands-on reels where I'll be showing you the BTS of all the process. Um, maybe I'll combine the filming and editing part into one video. So more videos like that are coming soon. I'm also still working on the Ultrace edit. When I say I'm working, I haven't even started. And I have shitloads of client work to go through. So I am prioritizing client work first. That's why I haven't been active on Instagram. I'm late by one day on YouTube, but I'll get everything done. I'll get Get everything sorted and the content will keep flowing so thank you for your patience guys and now let's get into the how to upload the best quality reels on instagram there are quite few factors that goes into uploading the highest quality reels possible uh first of all the good camera you can't avoid that um if the camera if the quality of the camera isn't great um there's not much you can do second most natural thing is um the good exposure so when you're shooting your videos for the video to be exposed as best as possible the most natural wide balance selected um, all these settings they really matter for the quality of the video if the video is exposed correctly it can be edited correctly and it can keep the most of the information into the image which leads to the best quality you need to make sure that you expose the videos correctly that the whites are white in your videos and then that your editing is good as well. So the third point would be color grading. Um, unfortunately, that matters a lot. And you can slap a lot. You can adjust some darks, shadows, and it might look good. However, the editing, the color grading, understanding the color science, um, and knowing which color works with, in which scenario is very, very important. And you have to know about it very well to actually get the results that you desire. Uh, but if we're talking about the export settings and also the Topaz Video AI, the enhancement app that everyone's going crazy about it, let's talk about those two. I'll show you my exact export settings and then I'll show you my exact Topaz settings for the best quality. And I'll tell you when you should be using Topaz and when you shouldn't be using Topaz. Because it's very, very easy to actually overdo the video in Topaz and then it looks totally crappy. I mean, high quality, but terrible. So let's get into the export settings first. Instagram tells you that you should be exporting your videos in 1080p quality. And then a lot of other creators will tell you that this is nonsense and that they are exporting in 4K and they're getting the best results possible. So you can't really know who is telling the truth. But what I can tell you is that you need to keep track of your file sizes. When I'm exporting, I always try to keep my videos between 100 and 250 megabytes. When it comes to exporting, and I'm exporting everything on Premiere Pro, but you can follow along and you can use these type of settings to almost any other editing software. I always choose render at maximum depth, use maximum render quality, then the bitrate settings. If the clip isn't too big, what I would choose is VBR one pass and target bitrate would be 45. Now, some people will tell you this is crazy high. And yes, uh, maybe sometimes it is, maybe sometimes it isn't. It depends on the situation and the video. What I noticed that for me, mostly on every single video that I put out, the VBR one pass and the 45 target bitrate is perfectly normal. It's it keeps my videos around 146 megabytes. Again, well, this is you know 25 second reel. So uh, if you're gonna be uploading something like one minute 30, that's gonna completely be off. So for something higher, something longer, I go and choose VBR two pass, and then I have target bitrate at 12 and maximum bitrate at 15. So this is for the bigger size files, for the longer duration videos. Uh, but for something like 25, 30, 15 seconds, I always go with the 
BBR1 pass and the target bit rate for me is always around 45. I heard so many different results that people are getting. Some people would say this is a crazy bit rate target uh, and that you should be lowering by much. Some say that this is great. Um, you don't really know until you try it yourself. It was always something I used to experiment with and I would come up with different type of settings. I would hear different type of opinions and change the settings to what I heard. Uh, but in the, in the years of practice and in now four years of uploading videos almost regularly to Instagram, I realized that for me, VBR1 pass 45 bitrate target um, works best on a shorter video and then on longer videos I choose VBR2 pass the target bitrate 12 and like the maximum bitrate 15 uh, or 25 even sometimes and that works for me great. Now of course my quality also comes from filming with FX3. Um, it's a great camera, it's overkill for, for social media I would even say, uh, which then produces very nice quality for my videos um, but I always film everything in 4k and I downsize it to 1080p even when I used to have Sony a7 III I used to never film in slow motion because Sony a7 III was able to film slow motion only in 1080p quality so I used to choose 4k every single time I used to scrap the slow motion and I used to downsize 4k to into 1080p for the best possible quality and for the cleanest possible image and now I have to be honest with you guys most of my videos that involve people fashion, nature, uh, some lifestyle, cinematic shoots. I export those videos with these settings and do nothing else. However, when it comes with automotive content and filming cars, I really, really like to use Topaz. I noticed that Topaz works so well with cars and enhancing the car video quality um, that now it's just a given for me. If I'm editing cars, I'm using Topaz uh, at the very end because I just love the sharpness, the, the, the look. Maybe some would even say the unnatural quality, uh, you know, seems like it's a render type of quality. Uh, so yeah, I use Topaz on my automotive reels and that's where most of these questions come from. How the hell did I get this uh, good of a quality on my car reels? So let's jump into Topaz and I'll tell you what exact settings I'm using and how can you copy those settings and hopefully get just as good results as I do. This is one of the recent reels that I've done for my Instagram. It's from Ultrace, this is the second Ultrace edit. If you wanna see the full video, head to my Instagram, have a watch there. But now let's talk about the settings. So I have a preset made, the one that I like and that I'm using on every single video. Every single time, I'm not changing every, anything. I just put this preset on, I export the video, and it always works great for my footage. So if we go to the settings, here's what you see. So I'm using Proteus or Proteus or however you want to say, the general enhancement for most videos. This is the model that I'm using. Uh, then for the noise, I don't add zero noise. I do 20 in recover detail. Focus fix is off. So then you click on enable parameters to be actually able to choose the parameters that you want. You would put fixed compression all the way to 100, improve details all the way to 100. We want all the details that's possible. Uh, sharpen is 65, reduce noise is 60, dehalo is 33, and anti-alias de-blur zero. Now with the reduce noise, make sure that you don't use these VHS type of effects when you're enhancing the quality with Topaz. Because this noise that you purposely put onto the videos when you're trying to do the VHS effect, unfortunately it gets destroyed and the clip looks too artificial. It doesn't look VHS, but it also doesn't look high quality. So it's like a mixture of two bads. So how I do it normally, I turn off the reduce noise or I will enhance the video and then I will slap on top the clips from Premiere Pro with the VHS effect so those clips don't get affected. And that's it really, that's all there is with the Topaz settings. They work with me flawlessly every single time. I really like how it comes out and the look that it gives me. And these reels that I uploaded got the most questions. How the hell do I keep the quality so high when uploading reels to Instagram? So hopefully guys, this video helped you today and you can actually get something out of it 
and decide for yourself what type of settings you want to use. Maybe if you're looking for good topless settings, try these, have a look and see how it works. Leave the comment below. Tell me if the results are just as good as they are for me. If you have any more questions, drop it down in the comments. It's been your boy Elvis Creative. I will see you next Wednesday, 5 p.m. sharp. Peace.